On the surface, there's nothing remarkable about the village of Moorfield in Hereford and Worcester, with its single shop and modest houses. But if you go through it and keep going for another ten minutes, well, it depends how you're travelling, because if you're on foot, you'll still be quite close to Moorfield, and it depends which direction you're travelling in. But if you're in a car and you're coming from London, or in fact anywhere between London and Moorfield, or actually anywhere the other side of London, you come to Le Lanford Marsh, which, with its two shops and a newsagent's, uh, which is also a kind of shop, is much more interesting. Uh, at the edge of the village, and set back from the road a little, is Hillside, which, as its name suggests, is a house. Yeah. Yes? Hello, yes, it's Roy Mallard. Is it about the guttering? No, not really, no. It's people like us. That's a lovely thing to say. <laughs> um, I hope I haven't disturbed you. No, no, my hair's always like this before I come in. Right. It's just that I'm afraid I, I'm a bit early. Uh, that's OK. I'll come back later. That's no problem. Um, right. Um. Oh, hello. Hello. That was quick. Well, I... There's a ladder somewhere in the shed, if you're ready now. R right. No, I won't be needing a ladder. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be... Clever. I'm going to enjoy this. Yeah. Roy Mallard. Hello, Roy. It's Leela Gregory. Yeah. Um, it's lovely to meet you. Look, we're just having some breakfast. Why don't you come in and join us? I imagine you're going to be needing a lot of energy. Well, <laughs> thank you. Yes, it actually, <clears throat> it's, yes, it, actually, it's Roy Mallard. If you remember, we talked about me spending the day with you. Well, oh, wouldn't surprise me. I think the downpipe's a bit loose as well. Is it really? Yeah. Most of us, at some point, have to come to a decision about whether we're living to work or working to live, except perhaps for people unlucky enough to be in the insurance industry. There are people, though, to whom these categories don't apply. Most of us at some point have to come to a decision about whether we're living to work or working to live, except perhaps for people unlucky enough to be in the insurance industry. Yes. But for me, you see, my work... Do you take sugar? Uh, yes, I do, please, yes. Right. What would you like it with? Well, coffee, please. OK, I'll just boil the water to make sure it's hot. Right. Leela Gregory is a painter. She's one of a small group of people whose lives don't follow the rhythms and structures that most of us rely on to give our lives rhythm and structure. At 45 years old, she'll be 46 next year, but there was nothing in her background to suggest a life that was going to be built entirely around art. Leela's interest in painting was kindled by her sixth form art teacher. Do you think that that teacher had any idea he was going to influence your life permanently? Yes, I think so. We got married. He wanted to influence it permanently. Really? So, so you were still at school when you got married? No, by that time I was at a registry office. Oh, I, I see, yes, of course. In fact, we both were. Yes. Is decaffeinated OK for you? Uh, yes, fine, yes. You sure? Yes, really, great. Hmm, maybe I should get some. Oh, this is Clive. Have you seen the weather? It's outside, I think. Clive, this is Roy. Hello. Hello, Roy. Why are you here? What? <laughs> what you mean, in a, in a philosophical sense? Yes. Roy's going to be spending um, the day with me. Uh, has she told you about the day in pipe? Yes, she has, yes. Clive has been Leela's partner for seven years. Her marriage to the art teacher broke up after only 18 months, when they found themselves having increasingly bitter arguments over whether or not he was a balding waste of space. She already had a place at art college in North London, but, unhappy and suddenly alone, she now faced the prospect of a meagre existence in a succession of anonymous bedsits. So she borrowed some money off her parents and bought a south-facing garden flat in Muswell Hill. It was a period in my life that taught me a lot of things about myself. What sort of things? It taught me that I had a voice, as a woman and as a painter, and that fulfilment was going to involve learning how to understand and trust what it was saying. Uh -huh. I don't know, what's the matter with this kettle? When, when you say voice, I mean, was this a special kind of language, do you think, that, that only artists can... It was Welsh. Oh, right. Uh, and did you speak Welsh? I didn't at the time, no. But you do now? No, I don't speak it now, either. So, I mean, how, how did you... How did I was you... lucky enough to find a therapist who spoke Welsh. That's why I ended up here in Frankfurt Marsh, really. Frankfurt. I thought it was Indian for a while, which could have been a lot more awkward, of course. Mm, yes, that would have... Are you sure it's switched on? Yes, I think so. Oh. Also, of course, it was a great time to be young. <laughs> yes, well, we're talking about, what, um, mid-60s? No, I was 21 or two. Yes, but... Um, I see what you mean, though, Roy. The mid-60s would be a terrific time to be still young. Really fine. But um, what, what, I, what I was... That's lovely. You say lovely things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you know. Um, 
It, it hasn't made any kind of kettle noise. No, I know. The thing is, Clive was very keen to have a cordless kettle. Really? Well, um, where's he gone, by the way? I think he's gone to look at the weather. Oh. I mean, it's very convenient, of course, but it used to work a lot better when it had a cord. Did it? Oh, hello. Hello. Isabel, this is Rye. Hmm. Is it really? Oh, how interesting. Well, thank you. I mean... Um, I mentioned uh, to Isabel that you were coming. We were discussing whether you could tell what someone looks like just from hearing their voice on the phone. Oh, really? And what did you decide? You were saying that you could, weren't you? Well, I was, yes, but I suppose it does depend what they look like. Yes, doesn't it? Has the kettle boiled yet? No, not yet. Isabel Turner is a sculptor. Ten years ago, she rented a room in Leela's house in Muswell Hill, and a lasting friendship began to blossom and flower. Despite an age difference between them of 15 years in total, Leela is ten years older than Isabel, and Isabel is a further five years younger than that, there was much that they had in common, including for two years a graphic designer called Jonathan, and in many ways their lives were running parallel. Both had been married and then divorced to, from older men, Isabel from, to an actor who was old enough to pass for her father on occasions when her father, who was also an actor, was indisposed. Since that time, they've shared a number of houses together, their work and lives becoming almost inexplicable. Our work and lives becoming almost inextricable. I see, yes. And now change legs. How do you mean change legs? After breakfast, washed Shift down with some water, people began to drift off in their separate directions, especially Clive. Very gradually. Uh, Isabel Clive begins each day center. with ten minutes Tai Chi under a spreading beech tree in the front garden. She asked me if I wanted to join her, but then didn't really seem to hear what I said. It's really a matter of finding rest in motion. Is it? Perhaps it would help if you just tried to follow what I do, basically. Right, right. Uh, Roy. What? I've just lost a tissue somewhere in my leggings. I'll be ready again in a minute. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Right. Are you okay? Yes, fine. There were two old wooden chairs on the lawn in front of the house, and when we'd finished, Isabel carried one of them over to me. Leela's a remarkable woman. Mm. When I first met her, I was completely directionless, so it was very affirming to meet someone else who was directionless, too. Do you ever get asked... What's the point of devoting your whole life to something as esoteric as sculpture? I've never met anyone stupid enough to ask that. No, good, good. And, and, and has there ever been... Is there something going on over in that tree or what? Uh, no, it's just that my neck's a bit... Um, I think I've perhaps I might... It's all right, though. I mean, it's nothing... Well, perhaps I should just move round, then. No, no, you stay where you are, I'll, I'll, and I'll move my... Um... Ah. ah, that's fine, fine. Yes, so has there Would ever... it help if I stood up? No, no, really, I mean, I don't want... Well, actually, yes, that is a bit ah. better. Yes, good. I mean, it's nothing. So, so has there ever been any artistic rivalry between either, either of... Between you, no, both of you? No, quite the reverse. I suppose it's lucky that we both work in different media. Yes, yes, that is lucky, isn't it? Yes. 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 Though I sometimes wonder whether Leela secretly envies me working in a third dimension. Yes, where, of course, she works in... A, in, in, in two dimensions, yes, yes. Yes, it must be very cramped. Hmm. Actually, there is something over in that tree. Is it a squirrel? Oh, we should probably move now. Is that an aircraft? No, it's Mitch. Look. Oh. Sorry. Oh, no, it's fine. No. Christ! You haven't met Mitch yet, have It's you? running away with him. No, he's pushing it. My God! Yes, we should move. Yeah. Oh. Mitch, which is a shortened version of his real name, which is Mitch Watkins, is Hillside's fourth inmate, inhabitant. At 27, he's younger than all the other occupants put together, and is the only one of the four not to be directly involved in the world that the other three are involved in. Although, since coming here, he has developed his own variety of very fast, aggressive Tai Chi. He originally came from a military background, something he continues to do even today. His is an intriguing story. He spent a period of time in the army himself where he used to drive tanks until eventually, since he was in the catering corps, he was asked to leave. Terrific machines, these. 18-inch cuts. Really? Yeah. I mean, so, it would propel itself, but where's the challenge in that? Yeah. At least this way you can get rid of a bit of you. Yeah. You know, yeah. makes me feel a bit less. Mm. Yeah. You can get grass stains out with diesel, you know. Oh, that's okay. These trousers have seen better days. Have they? When? Well, uh, I mean, I thought you were bound to take evasive action, but you seem to keep looking the other way. So, anyway, what first brought you to Hillside? Well, in actual fact, I was in garden maintenance at the time, really? and I came here to do the garden one day and just stayed, really. And that was four years ago? Yeah. And what, what are you doing now? 
maintaining it. Well, that's... Um... I mean, it's like my father says. Sometimes you've just got to get out there and not go back home. Yes. That's not even the third notch, you know. Nowhere near. Yeah. Really? Well, that's... It is, um... Yeah. So, so, I mean, living here must be a um, very different life from being in the army. Oh, most definitely. But it's good. And there's a hell of a lot to do. I mean, like last week, for instance, I spent the whole week chopping up wood. For the fire. <laughs> Excellent idea. And, and so how does it work? No, oh, it's fantastic. Get... You hit the wood with the axe really hard. No, I mean, how does it work? Do you, in your situation here, do you get a wage or... Oh, oh I see. Well, well, I get my food and my meals free. And yes. then breakfast thrown in. And, and do you have your own room? Well, in actual fact, Isabel and I share two rooms. Oh, I see. Well, that must be... I mean, it's... Well, it's yes, we've we got one each. Yes. I know, it's neat, isn't it? Yes, yes. Bloody squirrel. Oh, where? Ooh. Whereas this one is one I did last year. It's got a much harder feel to it. Yes. Yes, it has, hasn't it? Yes, that's... That's very... I mean, that's... That's very hard, isn't it? Leela has turned one of the upstairs rooms in Hillside into a studio by working in it. It's a still, peaceful room with light coming from windows, as you'd perhaps expect. In much of her work, she draws on... Well, I don't mean draws, of course. I mean, she... Although, well, I suppose she does, really, so I do mean that. In much of her work, she paints about her experiences as a woman and over the years has found herself drawn... In, has, has, has explored more and more often images of female sexuality, some of them really quite big. Yes, and this one's very, I mean, lots of, um, yes. very, um... Yes. Hmm. Yes, I mean, as a woman, it's a part of the body that I want to find a way of putting at the centre of my work. Well, it is right bang in the middle, isn't it? It's lovely colours. Hmm. What sort of, um, sort of frame is that, then? It, um, yes, I mean, is it re replenishable? Living in close proximity for so long, Leela and Isabel's working relationship is very close. And in the painting she's currently working on, Leela is using Isabel as a model. I borrowed your dressing gown from the bathroom. I hope that's OK. Oh, yes, of course. Borrow it from wherever you want. Oh, shall I? I mean, perhaps I should. Sorry, I was on my way, but there was a phone call for Clive and I had to go and find him. I think, I think I'll, I'll just... He was writing in the shed earlier. Yes, I thought so, but he's in the boiler room now. Is he? Oh, well, that's good. He's made some progress. Perhaps I ought to go and watch him, you know, because it would be interesting. Well, you might put him off. What is it that Clive's writing? He just writes. Oh, I see. Anyway, I'm here now. Is the temperature going to be all right for you? I think it's getting quite hot. I meant Isabel. Oh. Yes, it's fine. In fact, you're right, Roy. It's warm. Well, that is quite a thick dressing gown. It's mm. thick, isn't it? Yes, and long. Quite long, too, isn't it? Well, right. You know, when it's on, I mean, in terms of length. That's better. It's nice to be able to feel the warmth on the floorboards. Is that OK? Yes, that looks... At the moment, your arm's actually just covering you. Better? Oh. Yes, that's fine. That's lovely. Lovely. It's actually quite big, this garden, isn't it? It's very good for, um, what, squirrels. These are some of my favourite moments, Rory. Yes, they are nice, aren't they? Is the floor going to be all right for you? Yes, lovely. She meant me. Is it going to get a bit hard for you sitting like that? Well, I don't know, um... Oh, it might, I suppose. Yes, well, how about if we put something under you? The dressing gown? Oh, yes, OK. Shall I...? No, you're lovely there. Don't get up. Roy! Look, there's Mitch cutting something down. Roy, would you mind just sliding the dressing gown under Isabel's so that she doesn't have to break her pose? Um, uh, no, 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 of course not. Okay. Uh, of course not. <laughs> of course, it's fine. Right. I just raise myself up a bit in the middle mm. here. It is thick, isn't it? Is it cotton or some sort of blended cotton rich, perhaps? I think you may have to bend down towards me to get it far enough under. Yeah. Oh, my neck. That's it. Perhaps a little bit further under. Really? Yes. Perhaps if you kneel down. Yeah. Can you just? Oh, hello. <laughs> That's better. Yes. Well, thanks. For... Oh, what's this knobbly thing I'm on? It's my hand. Oh, sorry. There you are. That's okay. Are you all right? Yes, that's fine. I think my nipples are quite hard. Knuckles. Knuckles. By now, it really was getting very warm in Leela's studio, and I decided to spend some time on a chair which I'd come across on the landing just outside the door. With Leela and Isabel occupied, and with Mitch busy now sawing up some garden furniture, I thought this might be a good opportunity to talk to Clive and find out more about his writing. But it wasn't. Who's having some more bread? It's me. I am. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. Whatever they're working on individually, Leela, Isabel, Mitch and Clive, depending on where he's been writing, come together in the middle of the day for lunch, taking it in turns to cook. And today, it's Mitch's turn. What is this, Mitch? 
I don't think I've seen it before. It's soup. Is it? Yes. Yes, I see now. There's loads more. Why would you like some more? Uh, well, not just at the... Um, Less? Well, I, I mean, perhaps in a moment. So, I suppose there's an essential solitariness at the heart of... But what's in it? I got it out of these packets. But, but they are not soup. I had it water and stuff, you know. A, a sort of solitariness at the heart of being a painter, a sculptor, a writer, or war of garden maintenance and, and general, general other maintenance man? Yes, that's true. That's a good point. Hmm. And some forestry works a bit like that, too, of course. Yes, yes. And so, lone yachting. Yes, and so perhaps coming together to share... Soup. This, yes, soup. Uh, ...can actually take on a sort of ritual importance. Yes, that's another very good point. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I suppose the point I'm driving at is that most jobs involve quite a lot of interaction with other people, as a matter of course, you know, being on the phone, meeting clients... Being on the phone? Yes, although... Uh, Again, I mean, really, a lot of phone calls. Yes, but you've all chosen the lives. Have you finished your suit yet, Roy? Yes, I have, yes. No, you haven't. Well, I mean, I have, you know, really. It was, um, I couldn't... Um, anyway, you've all chosen to lead lives which depend on being cut off from the distraction of human contact. Yes. P perhaps this is something that Clive would like to, um... To... I don't think so, really. No, OK, fine, but, but there must... Holy oh, Mary! No, it was lovely, thank you. There must be a lot of self-discipline involved in the process. Yes, yes. Yeah. Who for? Right then. Well, um... Shall I carve? Oh, my God, look at the size of it. Yes, I know. It's a big one, isn't it? What is it? I don't know. I haven't tasted it yet. Those are its legs over there, look. Christ. After the shared experience of lunch, the house again became the backdrop against which individual creative preoccupations are worked out. Isabel in the studio working on some dimensions, Clive writing in a walk-in airing cupboard downstairs, and Mitch setting off with a lump hammer looking for some lumps. Hello, Leela Gregory. Oh, hi, Andrew. Have I caught you in the middle of something? Good. I'm fine. How are you? Good. Good. Yes. 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 For Leela, though, there's a phone yes. call. For the last few months, she's been exhibiting some yes, yes. paintings of goulash in a gallery in Worcester. Yes. Now, Andrew, the owner, has a potential buyer who's interested in meeting her. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 He'd like to meet her, presumably, to know a bit yeah. more about yes. the background to the paintings. As opposed, yes. probably, yes. to just... Um, just the foreground. Yes, yes, yes. Background things yes. such as um, what the main... Yes. What, how, how they came to... You know, whether she yes. intends intend paint, painting um, or... Oh, yes. The price, the background. Yes. It's... Yes. Who knows what uh, he really yes. wants to know. Um, Have I? Hopefully... Ah, thank God for that. That was Andrew, who owns the gallery in Worcester. Really? What, what did he say? He says he has a potential buyer who's interested in some of my gouaches and wants to meet me. I see, yes. Well, um, why does he want to meet you exactly? Well, I don't know, really. No. You sure you don't mind? No, no, not at all. I don't know why I've gone off driving. I think it's probably since my accident, really. Well, yes, it can take a long time to get confidence back after a crash. It wasn't a crash. I hit my head on a banister rail. Oh, dear. What were you doing? Falling down the stairs. Oh, I see. I've gone off lots of things since then. Yes. Right. So. Yes, this is it. I think you'll find it OK. Just like an ordinary car, really. Right. Yes. Is it? Right. Well, I mean, are you sure you don't want to take mine? No, it'll do it good to have a run. Yes. Especially now it's had the wheels fixed. Oh. Here are the keys. Is it locked? I think it is from the outside, yes. Right. Leela had agreed to be at the gallery by three o'clock, and with Worcester an hour's drive away, we decided to drive. Mitch had produced a chocolate surprise, which had set us all back a bit, so by the time we left, it was already too late to set off any earlier. I was happy to agree to Leela's request to drive, though I'd never driven a left-hand drive car before, and some of the controls weren't where I expected them to be. The handbrake, for instance, was on the back seat. So how do you structure your time? Do you work when you feel you want to, or do you force yourself to work a certain number of hours a day? Which certain number? No, well, I mean a, a number, any number. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, I work any number of hours on those days, up to a maximum. Right, because there is this... Um, do we need the windscreen wipers on? 
Uh, no, no, perhaps not really, but I, I mean, there is, oops, sorry, <laughs> there is this cliché, oh, sorry, about the, um, creative... We could uh, leave them on, doesn't matter, does it? No. Perhaps you can't turn them off when you're moving. No, perhaps not. There is this cliché about the creative process, isn't there, that it's about 98% perspiration and 2% inspiration. Mm, well, everybody's different, but I think, for me, it's much more evenly balanced. I'd say it's about 95% perspiration and 97% inspiration. That's a funny face. Well, no, no, it's just that... Um, it is, really. No, no, I know, it's just that, you know, the... Uh, you know the perspiration and inspiration thing. When you when you put them both together, they come to 192 percent. Painting's very hard. Oh yes, I'm sure it is. And anyway, why would you put them both together? Why would you? Well, um, they're totally different. Yeah. Which is the whole point. Oh yeah, yes, yes, I see now. Is it your neck? What? Uh, yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it's, it's, it's very brave about you. Oh yes, yeah, I think. Go on then, ask me some more questions. Uh, oh, yes, so, um, do you, um, ever... Fun. <laughs> do you ever feel that in devoting your life completely to your work, you might perhaps have missed out on other things? What sort of things, were? Well, I mean, for instance, do you ever wish you'd been married? Well, that's once I did, but then I met Clive, so... Yes. I mean, you can't have everything. No. You have to accept that certain things aren't going to happen for you, don't you? Do you? Well, that's interesting. What, you haven't found it easy either? Me? No, no, I mean, it's different for me, because I'm married. So, what do you mean? Well, I just mean, you know, I'm married. But I mean, who to? Uh, is it your neck again? Yes, yes, it's really, yes. It's left here. Oh, sorry. Yes. Ow. Leela, this is Nigel Collier. Nigel, Leela Gregory. Hello, Nigel. And this is, uh... Oh, I'm sorry, I don't think I know your name, do I? Roy Mallard? No, I thought not. Walcott Fine Art is an art gallery with its own coffee shop tucked away in a quiet corner of Worcester, which you probably wouldn't go to unless you knew it was there. Although it's hard to think why you'd go anywhere unless you knew it was there. Andrew Walcott came from London in 1986 to set up the gallery with his then wife, Yasmin. Since then, things have gone very well, and she's just become his present wife. Hello, Roy. Nigel Collier. Uh -huh. Nice to meet you. You must be very proud of uh, Leela. Oh, no. no. Oh, I mean, obviously I'm... Roy's just with me for the day. Yeah. Oh, so you're not together? No, not very, no. It's not really all his fault. We've had a difficult journey. I think for a moment Nigel thought that you and Roy were, you know, an item. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, how interesting. What sort of item? Should we look at the paintings? Yes, yes, I'd love to. Oh, I'm uh, sorry about that. I hope it didn't... Oh, no, no, that's OK. <laughs> it's just that you looked a bit... Yeah. I don't know. It's quite... <laughs> a couple. <laughs> no, Roy's already got a wife. How do you mean? Yes, I know. What? 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 Nigel Collier owns a small shoe factory in Worcester. In recent years, business has been good and plans are well underway to diversify into big shoes early next year. It's his wife, Valerie, who is interested in modern art. She already owns one painting by Leela, which Nigel bought her for her birthday last year. And this year, he wants to buy her two as a surprise. I don't actually know much about art, especially this abstract stuff. I mean, to be honest, I can't repeat what this one here reminds me of, for example. Well, I think it is. Is it? Yes, I think so. Christ. I mean, to my eyes, this one looks like something a small child would produce. Oh, what, you mean Saliva. the way... Oh, I see, yes. You haven't got children as well, have you? Well, I... What do you mean? There's starting to be a real buzz around Leela's work at the moment, and she deserves it after all these years. I think she could become very hot property. So how do you decide how much a painting is worth? <sighs> well, the short answer to that is that a painting's worth as much as it's worth. Yes. What about a longer answer? In a way, the world of money and the world of art are like two different countries which depend on each other but don't speak each other's language. I suppose my job as a gallery owner is to find a third language through which they can understand each other, and that really is the price of the painting. Oh, I see, yes. It's a bit like being an interpreter. Yes, except that interpreters don't speak a third language. They just turn one language into another. Oh, no, I think you'll find that's wrong. Uh, Yasmin's sister used to be an interpreter before she put on weight, and uh, she says you can't be an interpreter these days without a third language. Yes, but I mean interpreters don't speak a special language all of their own. Otherwise, no one would be able to understand them except other interpreters. Well, what about the Eurovision Song Contest, then? Yes, that's a good point. Do you know yet what kind of space you'll be hanging them in? Oh, no, well, I, I leave all that to Valerie. All right, yes. It's just that, obviously, size and shape can be important. Well, she's quite big. Oh, is she? Mm. Well, what about something like these, then? Yes, yes, yes. I think these might be her, more her sort of thing, because they're quite sort of, um, you know, 
Can you tell me a bit about them? Well, they're gouache. Oh, are they? Yes, good. Yes, you like that food. Yeah, and I think I'm right in saying that these were actually painted as a pair, weren't they, Leela? Well, the second one was, yes. So, I mean, you know, if you had two walls in the same room... Of course I've got two walls in the same room. Nigel was finding it hard to come to a decision on behalf of his wife. Buying two such similar paintings was a risk, and in the end, after further discussion with Leela and Andrew, he decided to play safe and buy one painting which he thought she might like and another one which he thought she probably wouldn't. On the way back, I asked Leela how it felt to know that she'd sold some of her work. I think what I'd say is that it's invigorating, especially when your work hasn't been going particularly well. And, of course, the money's always nice. But I have to say that if I never sold another painting from tomorrow, I'd carry on working. Really? Do you think it's something to do with all of us wanting to leave our stamp on the world in some way or another? I've never thought of it like that. That's very interesting. How will you leave your stamp on the world? I'm sorry. Very annoying having this tractor in front, isn't it? It is quite annoying, yes. Can't you flash him? No, I don't think so, no. It was quite annoying when he was behind. At least now he's overtaken. I think he'll be pulling away quite fast, so, you know. That's a good thought. <laughs> Very positive. Hmm. The journey back took much longer than we'd anticipated, due partly to some problems with our anticipation, and partly to a problem with the car when the brakes started to pull to one side, which meant finding a route back without any right turns and reversing round the Great Malvern one-way system. Back at the house, things were very much as we'd left them, except that Mitch had made a start on converting the loft space into a much bigger one. Hillside is like a little village within a bigger... Well, within a village, and before I left, I wanted to take a short walk into Clanford Marsh to find out how some of the other residents viewed their neighbours. Well, this is a very friendly village, like, right? but they keep themselves very much to themselves. Is there something wrong with your neck? No, it's fine. So, that, so they don't take an active part in village life? Well, at first start, you never see them anywhere near the White Horse. Perhaps they just don't like pubs. Oh, yes, but what's that got to do with it? Well, I mean, isn't the White Horse a pub? No, 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 well, no. Right. It's a horse. That's ridiculous. Excuse me, I wonder if I could... Sorry, I'm an atheist. Ah, oh, fair enough. Well, in some ways, I think we're pretty small-minded in a village like this when it comes to people whose lives aren't like our own. So for you, it's a case of live and let live. No, I hate them. That's what I'm saying. I really hate them. No, we I all mean, do. Yes. Can't stand them. Mm -hmm. Can't say I come across them much, really. For instance, I've never once seen them at the rising sun. Well, maybe they're not morning people. <laughs> You take the piss. Well, I think it's lovely yeah. to feel that creative people want to live and work mm -hmm. here. I mean, we all had free sex in the 60s. Yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't imagine... No, you. I remember the 60s. Yes, I was going to say I shouldn't imagine you had free sex. One of the ladies, though, was very good to me when my dog died. Oh, really? What did she do? Chase rabbits. Really? She was run over. Oh, dear. The demands made on most of us by our jobs, our mortgages, or our marriages, as I know for a fact myself, because I am married leave us precious little time or energy to engage with the sort of questions about what we are, who we are, and, and when, how, how, how we are, which are the stuff of an artist's life. And perhaps that's what we want and need of them, that they should explore this stuff on our behalf. In the end, we perhaps depend on artists every bit as much as we depend on the people who know how our cars, our central heating systems, or our teeth work. And perhaps the need is mutual. It's perhaps because artists aren't people like us that people like us need people like them to show us what we're like as people. Whilst on the other hand, conversely, the opposite is also true. Roy Mallard would like to give a special thank you to Chris Langham and also to Harriet Walter, Melanie Hudson, Dominic Letts, Kim Wall and Robert Harley. The programme was written by John Morton and produced by Paul Schlesinger.